Award-winning author, speaker, and writer Jan Pollock Michelle joins me in the city of Edmonton, Alberta at Breakforth. Jan, welcome to 100 Holly Street. Thank you, Rob. Now, in reading about all the wonderful comments that people say about you, one thing that stands out is this, that you and your husband Ryan have five school-age children. Yes. Now, those five, two of those are twins. Yes. And so they're asking, how does Jen accomplish all that she does as a mother of five? Well, I do send them all to school <laughs> at eight in the morning. But, you know, for a long time, I would use just really early morning hours, get up at five. That's just been my practice for years, to get up at five, you know, have some quiet time to be with the Lord, to work, and, you know, yeah. kind of greet the day a little bit later. Greet the kids, at least, a little bit later. <laughs> now, you, you hold both an BA in French mm -hmm. and an MA in literature. Mm -hmm. and, and plus, you've published, you blog, and you're also a published author. And your first book, which is entitled Teach Us to Want, was awarded Christianity Today's um, 2015 Book of the Year. Yeah. Now, I guess Jen loves to write. So, when did all this love for writing take place? You know, my dad was a writer. My dad was a college professor, and he just taught us to love books and to, to write. So it wasn't unusual for, you know, my mom's birthday that he would write a poem for her. And he grew up writing, you know, as I was growing up, he was writing plays, he was acting in plays. And so I think the first play I wrote, I was maybe in grade three. Um, I just kind of grew up with a love for language. We used to play a lot of word games at home and, you know, regular trips to the library. And so writing for me was just just kind of what you did. So it's more like like, like stories, poems, combination? Yeah, you know, um, I, like I said, I can remember writing a play for school, j journaling, yeah. honestly. When I first, um, when I was in high school, I filled notebooks after, like, just tons of notebooks with journaling. Mm. And um, when I graduated from high school, I had been mentoring a group of girls um, two years younger. When they graduated two years later, I wrote a devotional for them. So I started to write devotional kind of things and it sort of took oh. off from there. Now, talking about writing, you say, I write and live and hoping to make sense of this enormously beautiful, hopeful story, which Christians have been telling for millennia. And it's this, Christ has died, mm. Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. So growing up, when did the story, hopeful story of Jesus change Jen's life? Yeah, I'm so grateful. I was raised in a Christian home. My parents took me to church. You know, we were the kind of the family that went to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday evening, choir practice. Like we had all that um, all, all throughout the week. But I was kind of one of those people who thought Christianity is true, but it's not necessarily fun. And so I'll do it. I'll kind of follow Christ when I get a little bit older. And so I had this really rebellious period in um, early high school and then ended up in a, it's sort of a really cliche story, but ended up at summer camp with my youth group and had an encounter with Christ where Christ, I just felt, I heard him say to me, you know, where are you headed? What do you want and will you follow? And that was when I was 16. And, you know, from that camp just has just been a time of growth. Not that there haven't been seasons of mm -hmm. difficulty and darkness and doubt, but I would say since 16, really, um, I can say that I gave Christ my life. As you in that public confession then. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you've stated as a writer, that what keeps you central. I think it's a great phrase and it kind of ties in with your, your testimony and that is the call to practice the practice of resurrection. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? Which is totally plagiarized, and I admit that on my website, <laughs> that um, it actually comes from a Wendell Berry poem, and then Eugene Peterson wrote a book called Practice, Practicing Resurrection. And for me, it's just this idea that if the resurrection is true, mm -hmm. you know, our whole life kind of like we live out of that story, and it shapes the way that we respond to grief and to sorrow. It shapes our hopes, it shapes our to do list. And so, practicing resurrection for me is just okay, if this story is true, what does it change about today? What does it change about my interactions with my kids and my husband, with my neighbors, with people in the carpool line at school, um, with the writing that I do? Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of the writing that I do is just, is just to say, you know, this is true and what are the implications of the fact that Christ has died and that he is risen again and that we are also raised to walk in newness of life. Now, making that statement public, especially those that read your material, um, does it bring up many questions from your audience? Yeah, I think for sure, especially in Toronto. I live in Toronto, and so people are like, 
you're a Christian writer, you write about theology, about the Bible, they're just a little bit honestly put off because initially sort of thinking like, I don't know, does that make you weird? <laughs> you know, <laughs> does that mean that you're going to like, you know, give me a tract and, you know, ask me to pray right now? And I think that as people get to know me, they start to see what resurrection means in the everyday and what it means for somebody to live with hope, with joy, um, with a belief that there's something bigger than just here and now. Mm. You know, I, I love, um, as a writer, you've also said in, in this final phrase, you say, writing is noisy business, mm. and I don't wish to add to the clamor. Nevertheless, I write as one who listens. Mm -hmm. What are you hearing today? I love that verse. That actually, that verse comes from Isaiah. For me, I'm, I'm hearing from culture a desire for rest, mm -hmm. um, a confusion about desire and longing and ambition. What role does this play in our lives? So these are the, some of the things that I've been thinking of. I see in our culture a longing for home. I hear that in all of these um, stories that we're hearing about things that are happening in Europe as you know, people are flooding into Europe from places that are torn by war. Um, so for me, I'm listening to the longings of culture. And what I want to do is kind of make that connection and say the gospel speaks into that, into our deepest human longings. Do you find it easy to write about the gospel and explaining that through your literature? You know, what I'm trying to do, I think, is to find kind of new language for a very old story. I think that the difficulty sometimes is to tell it in a way that is startling for people who have heard it over and over again. You know, what resurrection, okay, yeah, we know this stuff. Well, but do we? And so for me, and again, to sort of mention Eugene Peterson, he talks about language needing to be subversive, that pastors need to use subversive language so we can kind of startle people away awake. And I think for me, that's the challenge and that's sort of what I lean into. Mm. Well, you know, if you're watching uh, this interview and there is this gnawing in your own heart, as Jen was talking about her testimony and the resurrection, we've got prayer partners that would love for you to call them, love to talk with you and pray with you. And so I encourage you, you can, you can call the number 1-866-273-4444. Someone would love to pray with you. Jen, it's wonderful to have you with us today. Thank you so much for sharing your testimony in 100 Street. You're welcome. We'll be right back.